Well, I haven't got much done for the last couple of days. The weather has just been gorgeous for a couple of days. And kind of the last ones we get to the fall here. It is September, well, it's 13th today. Yesterday was the 12th. That puts us pretty much into the fall here in this country. So yesterday I had a big flight. They took off uh, early. I did uh, surveys way up, way up in the upper end of the Stikine River, up in the Taltan Lake where the sockeye go up there. And then we did a survey up through Canada, went up the Grand Canyon to the Stikine. That was uh, just a fantastic trip into the Cassier Highway and then followed it down to the headwaters of the Iskut River and followed the Iskut River down. They were looking for potential sites to stock sockeye salmon again to try to bring the sockeye salmon population back up. Uh, one of the places that they were stocking salmon and that was native land and they d decided they didn't want them stocking salmon in there anymore so they had to uh, stop that. So anyway they're looking for a replacement place to stock salmon. Anyway, that was about a five-hour trip, and that was just a fantastic trip. Well, I come back, I did a little bit of work here on the cabinet. There was quite a bit of rust around the base of the cabinet. I cleaned it up with a wire brush and then uh, squirted it with some Exo Rust. I put primer on there first, and I put some black on there. And I had a heck of a time with the black. I've had a heck of a time with these spray cans lately. They just don't seem to want to work right. Anyway, it took a while, and I... I got that sprayed with some black and cleaned up nice and pretty. Then we did some other stuff with the timbers up there. We got them finished, stained, so now I've got to stack those up and put them away. Well, I cleaned this cabinet up a little bit, mainly just wiped it down. Oh, now I'm going to see if I can't get it together. I got it up on a stand here, uh, even with the top. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is to get that motor mounted up there. And then once I get the motor mounted up, and I'll see if I can't get the base cabinet back on the top. that goes on and then a washer, fender washer that goes on and the nut. It's not five eighths, three quarters. Just got to turn on that spring. That's good. Let's see. Let's try something out. Well, I'm just going to make it easy on myself and loosen that nut on that uh, adjustment screw. No, I can't do that either, damn it, because I put the pin in there on that, so I can't do that either. I'll have to tighten it back up. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Now 
Now I gotta find the nuts to, to hold down nuts here. Alright, that wasn't so bad getting that on there. But now I gotta figure out. Well, there we go. I loosen that collar up on that other side over there so I can get that collar back and get this uh, cabinet slid back this way just a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Alright, I'll have to tighten that collar back, to, back up when I get everything back together. I've got three of these. I'm supposed to have four, so I'm going to have to go look for another one. See if I can get them started in there. Let's see if I can find another one. Get a little light in there on the subject, that'll help. Okay, so these are really short and they can't be long because they're going down into a blind hole. Well, everything I got over here is too long. Well, I'm going to have to go over to the shop and see if I can find one the right size for this. Well, these bolts that come out of there I have a flanged head with serrations on the bottom of it for kind of a lock. Oh, well, I couldn't have any of those, but I did found a bolt that's the right size. I got a big washer on it so that it doesn't pull through the sheet metal on that cabinet base. It's pretty thin metal there and the hole's bigger than these are 5 16 inch bolts and the hole's quite a bit bigger, so I got a lock washer and a washer. I'm going to put that one right here on this hole closest to the outside where it's easiest to get to so I don't drop all of that stuff. for that one. Now that collar, locking collar in there, um, I can go ahead and tighten it up. Now I got this bushing that goes on the outside on the uh, angle adjustment. It'll be a little bit of a challenge because it's got to go on. It's got a screw on the outside, two screws on the outside, and then nuts on the inside. Wasn't too bad. Those are flange nuts have locking deals on them, and so they held themselves while I, after I tightened them up by finger tight, they held themselves while I tightened them up with a screwdriver outside. Alright, here's the nut that goes on that handle and holds it on and then tightens it up to stop it. So well, here's the other handle. I had to clean it up. The nut was missing on this one. So I ordered a new nut and I got it yesterday. So we've got one more thing to go on there and that's this pointer for the angle adjustment. Remember how to put it on there. Okay, here's the last little bit to put this thing back together. Mostly, oh I gotta put that pin back in there. I got the indicator for the angle, the blade angle, sit on there and we'll have to adjust that to get it set once I get the uh, blade on and the saw set up and everything. But it's in there now and that had to go on over this sleeve that goes through here. So I had to take the pin back out of the shaft. Get that in there. I'm going to put the pin back in. That looks good. I'm going to put the handle on there. This thing was, this handle was down in a box with a bunch of nuts and bolts and other parts. Actually, it's the uh, motor cover, the cover that goes over here on the side. And uh, there's a uh, the bunch of stuff, you know, odds and ends in there. So this goes on there, and this is the last piece. This is the nut that I bought. This was missing, and I just bought that off of eBay. Got it for $5 plus shipping. Uh, there was anywhere from 
thirty dollars for one of these to down to five dollars and I got the five dollar one huh this one's for the adjustment the height adjust, or the angle adjustment to put on. I've got the extension, cast iron extension table to clean up and put on. The cover here for the motor. I probably got to set, put a blade in there and set everything up so that my angle and everything is right and so that my blade tracking is right. And I've got to get a cord and put a new cord on here that'll fit on my 220 volt outlets. But the main body of this is all together all nice and cleaned up. Um, it looks a whole lot better than it did. Well, anyway, that thing looks a heck of a lot better than it did, but with everything on there now, it's pretty heavy. So I'm going to wait for my son to come home and help me turn that over and put it down on the floor. And then we'll continue working on it from there, and I'll have to get the extension wing out and start cleaning it up. And, uh, but anyway, that thing looks a lot better than it did. Well, there's the wing of that for that table saw. I dug it out last night and uh, cleaned out the bottom side of it. It actually cleaned up pretty good. It was pretty dirty underneath it on the bottom side. The one that had sawdust and stuff on it. The other thing is I had it sitting up on the shelf back in the back corner of the hangar here. And it was right underneath where the stovepipe goes out for the wood stove. And if that uh, came down, it dumped a whole bunch of creosote and crap out of the wood stove down into that, filled that up. And fortunately, it didn't rust it. It just made a mess. So I got the inside of it cleaned up, or the bottom side of it cleaned up. And then the top side of it, just like everything else, had anti-corrosion paste on it. And that's wiped off, so it looks better. But there's still some pretty good rust on it on the far end down there. So I'm going to go ahead and take the wire brush to it and start cleaning that up and get the worst rust off of it and uh, treat it just like I've done all the rest of the cast iron stuff I've done so far. Get the rust down off of it and then get the scotch brights and polish it up and wax it. Get it ready to put on that table saw. This old wire brush, it's a cup brush that I've been using, is starting to fling bristles out of it. And they always do, but this is getting kind of worn now. This is kind of a cheap, cheap em, chinese -em one. The wires have been sticking in my clothes. I've been finding them in there, so I dug out a leather apron wearing that to keep the wires from embedding themselves in me. Oh yeah, gotta unplug it into the wall socket here. Wasn't exact quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. There are no pits on it. It was just surface rust, and uh, there's some kind of other protective coating on there that kept it from rusting. I mean, I had my corrosion block stuff on there, but there was something else in there. As I was polishing that up, it it couldn't get hardly get down to the bare metal underneath. So we'll get that cleaned up some more now and polished up a little bit with the Scotch Brights. I'll wash that down a little bit, uh, some fresh paint thinner on it and wash it down and then some acetone, get it good and clean and then I'll put some paste wax on it like I've done everything else. Maybe I'll take some little bit of paint and paint that bottom side and around the edges of it just to, to pretty it up a little bit, although nobody will probably ever see it but me, but that'll protect it some more. 
but we'll get this all cleaned up and then I've got to go to town to get some bolts to bolt that onto the saw. So let's get that cleaned up. Well, we'll let that lacquer thinner flash off. I run out of acetone here, so I'm using lacquer thinner now. Uh, it's well, I've got a couple little things to do on the table saw yet to make it uh, ready to run. I've got to adjust the trunnion on there so that the blade is square with the fence so that it cuts uh, parallel with the fence in the miter gauges or the miter slots. And I've got to put a new plug on the cord so that it'll mesh up with my outlet plugs and my extension cord that I've got for the 220 stuff. I got the extension table cleaned up, the cast iron extension table cleaned up and painted. And then I got to thinking I might have the right size bolts over in my bolt stash. So I went over there to the shop and looked and sure enough I found the bolts and washers for that. And I even replaced the ones that go on this side for the table addition. Well I've been working on a few other things. I've got the motor cover here to clean up. That had a bunch of creosote on it. And then I've got the uh, guide there, the rail for the fence. And the fence, I'm going to need the fence for what I'm doing. I'm going to be doing ripping. And then I've got a big extension table there that goes on it too. It's about three feet or four foot long. Uh, I'm not going to need it and it's just going to be in the way if I put it on now. But I'm going to get it all cleaned up and ready to go. That will be nice to have in a shop with a with everything fixed so you don't have to move it around or if you're going to use it a whole bunch but i'm not going to use it right away but i i got to clean it up anyway so a lot of that stuff had the creosote on it and stuff that came out of the chimney and i've been cleaning everything up with paint thinner and acetone and lacquer thinner and i didn't really want to go to any water-based stuff on the on the bare metal there on those cast iron surfaces but it really wasn't working very good to get this dirt this creosote and stuff off of these other parts so I went and got some detergent I've got some ZEP uh, purple industrial strength degreaser and cleaner I use that on the airplane when I'm washing it uh, I mixed up some warm water with some of that and uh, that just cut that creosote and the rest of that grease and stuff off the painted surfaces just perfect it's working a lot better than paint thinner did even to get that old anti-corrosion spray off of there and stuff it just melts everything right off if it doesn't come off right away then you just get it wet let it soak for a few minutes and come back over it again and it just melts everything off so anyway I've got the the rail for the fence cleaned up pretty good this cover for the motor those are cleaned up I'm gonna rinse those off with fresh water and dry them out and then I've got to dig the fence out it's over there stacked up there underneath that stand that's a stand I built for working on the wings of the airplane and it's just sitting over there out of the way. That's what I got to do yet. And I was looking at the belt for that, the drive belt for that, and that is really stiff. It sat down there a long time and took a set. Well, I'll probably use it like that. Well, we'll see how it goes if the weather, uh, the weather's supposed to change again here. And this today is a bonus day. It was supposed to be raining, pouring down rain and windy today, and it's pretty nice so far today, but it's clouding up now and supposed to be nasty tomorrow and for a few days. Anyway, I'm going to order a new belt for it anyhow. Like I said, that one will work for what I need it for. If I get a fresh one before we get ready to start using it, more power to me.